Hi everyone, today we are unboxing a Seiko watch that is in my mind one of the most underrated Seiko watch out there. I can't wait to show you more. Now I've actually purchased this watch pre-owned from another watch collector who was selling this watch on the Malaysian watch forum. And this gentleman bought this Seiko from the Hamida Airport in Tokyo back in 2017 during his holiday. This is a JDM model, a Japanese domestic market, only available in Japan. As you can see, the watch comes in this grey leather box, very nice texture, very nice feeling about the box. And we can tell immediately that we are really talking about a premium product over here. Let's open the box and see what's in there. Ooh, just look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sarx 027. There are many aspects of the watch that I love. First, we're just going to run through the overall dimensions of this watch, okay? So the diameter of this watch stands at 40mm, which is a sweet spot for me for my 7-inch wrist. The lock to lock distance is 47mm. The lug width is 20mm and the case has an overall thickness of 12.8mm. To be honest with you, I did have my reservation about this 12.8mm thickness. I was a bit concerned that this thing might sit a bit too tall for my wrist, but when I first wore this watch, I knew immediately that my worries were unfounded. In fact, I feel that having this slightly thicker case gives the watch a more substantial presence on the wrist. In fact, if I think about it, right, this watch wears very similar to a Seiko cocktail, which have an overall height of 14.5mm, which is even higher. Now, this watch case is fully polished, and it features a nice open case bag. And through this open case bag, you can see that the watch is fitted out with a highly reliable in-house Seiko movement, the 6R15, bidding at 28,800 VPH, with 50 hours of power reserve. It has a hundred meter of water resistance, but you know, being a dress watch with a leather strap and without a screw down crown, I definitely wouldn't be bringing this watch into the pool. Talking about the leather strap, this watch comes with a really nice crocodile strap with high gloss finish, and it comes with this nice deployment buckle. I didn't think that I would actually like the leather strap with gloss finish. I thought it may look a bit gaudy, but after wearing this watch for a few days, I start to get it. I think Seiko has made the right choice here. To pair this watch with this strap, it's just perfect. Now about the crystal, the watch comes with a single dome sapphire crystal, which means that it is flat on the outside and curved on the inside. This gives us this beautiful optical distortion as we look at the watch on an angle. Now, I saved the best for the last, and to me, the most attractive aspect of this watch is none other than the beautiful enamel dial. The surface of this dial has this luster that is actually quite subtle and doesn't distract from the overall clarity of how the watch is designed. And speaking about design, the design of this watch is actually inspired by Riki Watanabe, someone who has been respected as a real pioneer in the Japanese design industry since the 1950s. He is the Japanese equivalent of a Bauhaus master. Riki's most iconic design include the public clock called the Hibiya Po clock. And throughout his career, he has designed a number of clocks with very distinctive style, especially when we look at the way the numeral fonts were designed. There's something quite essentially Japanese about this design. Now in this box, I also found something that's quite interesting, and that is an original tag that come with the watch. It has some Japanese writings on it. I got some help to translate this paragraph and it reads something like this. Clock, the most familiar instrument in our daily life, shows the stream of life which cannot be seen with our own eyes. For designers, it is a battle on a tiny ring to humanize the instruments. Now, Ricky passed away in 2013 at the ripe age of 101. And you can see that there's a lot of 
design collaboration between the Ricky Design Studio and the Seiko Group. This automatic watch that you're seeing right here right now was first released in 2010. And in September of 2019, just last year, Seiko has announced the release of two new Presage models. They were also inspired by the late Riki Watanabe. These two watches are the SNR037 and the SNR039. It also features the iconic Riki numerals, but this time, these two watches are actually fitted out with a spring drive movement, which <laughs> immediately brings up the price. Back to this watch, to me, this watch has fully embodied the design philosophy of Riki Watanabe. But unlike the new spring drive models, the price of this watch is actually still relatively affordable. I believe you can still get it brand new at around $700 mark at this point. Um, and that is already representing a $100 price increase compared to when this watch was first released. And the next question is this, what can Seiko do to bring this watch to the next level without necessarily increasing the price? And for me, it is very hard to answer this question because in my eyes, this watch is near to perfection. If I'm going to nitpick, and it is really nitpicking here, this is what I'm going to say. I love the way the crystal optically distort the dial when you look at it at an angle. But this also means that in this angle, you start to visually lose some of the numerals. And this is something that perhaps can be solved by making the bezel a little bit thinner and use a double dome crystal instead of single dome one. And that would be my only negative comment about this watch. Now to wrap it up, I think Seiko SARS 027 that we are looking here is a fantastic value proposition because of three reasons. Number one, it tells the story of Riki Watanabe, a grandmaster of Japanese design. It's just great conversation piece to have on your wrist. Number two, it offers a minimal design that's timeless, meaning that it will continue to look good for years and years to come. Last but not the least, let's not forget for the entire package, the enamel dial, the reliable movement, the nice single dome sapphire, the nice leather strap, and the great story behind the watch, we're looking at something that's less than $700. If you like what you see today, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. We would like to have you on board. And I'd like to hear what you guys think about this watch in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.